Hello and welcome back, it's Tall Toast here. Today I'm going to recap the action thriller Inside Man, Settle In, and Subtitles On. At the beginning of the movie, a man introduces himself as Dalton Russell and finds himself confined to a small cell. He declares his intention to execute a flawless bank robbery. Later, we witness the start of the robbery taking place in New York City. A group of skilled robbers dressed in painter coveralls arrive at a branch of the Manhattan Trust Bank in a van. One of the painters, Dalton, enters the bank and sets two high-intensity flashlights on a small service table. Upon turning on the flashlights, he aims them at two security cameras, rendering them useless. Following this, Dalton approaches a security guard from behind and holds him at gunpoint. The other painters then enter the bank, armed with firearms and smoke bombs, and proceed to subdue the bank customers. At the same time, Sergeant Collins, a patrolling NYPD officer, observes smoke emanating from underneath the doors of the bank. Upon attempting to gain entry, he discovers the doors are locked and immediately contacts police dispatch. Frazier and his partner, Bill Mitchell, are informed by their commanding officer, Captain Matthias Coughlin, that he's assigned them to work the hostage situation. While this is happening, the police arrive in full force at the Manhattan Trust, including patrol officers, a mobile command centre and the emergency services unit. Word of the bank robbery is also sent to the bank's founder and chairman, Arthur Case. Subsequently, Detective Fraser arrives outside the bank and meets with Sergeant Collins. Meanwhile, the robbers are corralling all the hostages to the lower floor where the vault is located. One of the female robbers separates the bank employees from the customers. Dalton tells the crew to confiscate all cell phones and keys from the hostages. He then directs Stevie to separate the male and female hostages and instructs them to remove their clothing. Afterward, Dalton distributes painters' suits, masks and dark shades to everyone. This results in the hostages and robbers being indistinguishable from one another. While inside the bank, one of the hostages is experiencing severe coughing and wheezing. Dalton promptly escorts the individual to the entrance and pushes them outside. The police then detain the individual, initially unable to distinguish whether they are a hostage or one of the robbers, and subsequently handcuff them before leading them away. At this point, the movie begins to shift between the main storyline. It skips ahead in time when Fraser and Mitchell interview hostages after the robbery has ended. They're trying to pick out the perpetrators from the rest of the hostages. At an office elsewhere in Manhattan, we see a high-power fixer, Madeline White, talking to a client. The conversation is interrupted by White's assistant, who tells her that Arthur Case is on the phone. White takes the call, and Case, knowing White's profession, explains that he has a small problem requiring a person with special skills and complete discretion. She assures him she is more than capable of doing such a job. The movie jumps to the aftermath of the robbery. Fraser and Mitchell interview a young man who tells the detectives that the perps called each other a variation of Stephen, Stevo, and Stevie. Back in the present, White and Case are walking along the riverfront, discussing what Case needs. He tells her that he has precious family heirlooms inside his safety deposit box that are priceless to him. Next, the perps release another hostage from the bank. His hands are tied behind him, and a case is placed around his chest. Elsewhere in Manhattan, White pays a visit to the mayor and tells him that she's going down to the hostage situation. She needs him to make sure that she's afforded every courtesy by the people in charge. White clearly has enough influence to get the mayor to do what she asks. Next, Fraser opens the case that was hung around Vikram's neck. They want two buses and a fully fueled plane. Meanwhile, Dalton steps outside and hands one of the officers a piece of paper, which instructs the cops to deliver enough food to feed all the hostages in the command centre. Next, pizzas with hidden transmitters are delivered to Dalton. The officers hear a foreign language being spoken inside the bank through their transmitters. To blend in with the hostages, Stevie hands her gun to Steve. She then raises her voice and starts to cry loudly, hoping to create the impression that she is one of the hostages. Upon listening to the audio transmitted in a foreign language, they quickly realise that the robbers are staying one step ahead of them. The audio is identified as being that of Reginald Blue, the late president of Albania who passed away two decades ago. Stevie and Dalton enter the bank's safety deposit box room and retrieve an envelope containing legal documents bearing Arthur Case's name, along with numerous black velvet pouches. Meanwhile, White arrives with the mayor and requests a meeting with Fraser to discuss contacting the robbers inside. Though initially hesitant, Fraser agrees to the plan. After establishing contact with Dalton over the phone, the robbery leader insists that his previous demands be met. Fraser, along with two officers, 
accompanies White to the bank doors. Upon entering the bank, White presents an offer to the robbery leader. She assures Dalton that he will receive a minimal prison sentence and $2 million upon its completion if he surrenders. Dalton then tells her a story about an American man who used his position as a clerk for a Swiss bank during World War II to enrich himself while others were being robbed of everything. The man used his blood money to open a bank in New York, and Dalton reveals that the man in question is Arthur Case. Back outside the bank, Fraser debriefs White on the conversation with Dalton. In the following scene, more post-robbery interrogations follow. Fraser and Mitchell are seen interviewing Stevie, but the detectives cannot pick out anything that separates her from the other real hostages. At present, Fraser believes that Dalton is actually stalling them. He then calls and bluffs him, saying the plane he asked for is ready, but Fraser needs to come into the bank and ensure the hostages are OK first. Dalton agrees. Next, Fraser is led into the bank by Dalton, who leads him around where the hostages sit masked and clothed like Dalton and the other robbers. Once near the exit door, Fraser offers Dalton a handshake, but he then grabs him and wrestles him to the ground. Fortunately, Stevo is there with his rifle jammed into Fraser's back. They push him out of the bank. Fraser enters the command centre and briefs Darius. Next, Coughlin and Darius study blueprints of the bank, deciding it's time to end the situation. But the following morning, Fraser is smart enough to realise that the metal case sent out with Vikram was bugged with a transmission device. Grabbing a microphone, Fraser frantically warns Darius about the transmitter but Darius refuses to stand down. Within the bank, Dalton signals the three Steves who release smoke grenades while the hostages are herded into the hallway. The police are about to enter when a small explosive blows the door open. People start to run out in small groups, begging the police not to shoot. Some officers use rubber bullets anyway until Captain Darius orders them to stop. All the individuals are gathered together, made to lie on the ground, handcuffed, and their masks are removed. The officers conduct a thorough search of the bank finding evidence that confirms Fraser's suspicion that this was not a typical bank robbery. Interestingly, no money from the bank has been stolen. In addition, the rifles that the three Stevens left behind are revealed to be toys. Meanwhile, all the hostages are taken to the station for questioning. A while later, Fraser and Coughlin meet in a conference room, and the former gives the grim details of how flawlessly planned the heist was. Each hostage was shown photographs and questioned, but every single hostage has at least a few people who would rule them out as a robber. Coughlin tells Fraser to bury the case. Once back at his office, Fraser discovers that Safety Box 392 is not on the recorded list. Fraser visits the courthouse where he meets Madeline. She reminds him of their agreement to bury the case and promote him to a higher detective grade if he complies. White once again urges Fraser to drop the matter, but he departs without answering her. In a subsequent scene, White confronts Case regarding the robber's true intentions. She knows that he must have had precious valuables, and there's only one thing they could be, what the Nazis used for payment, diamonds. Case writes a check to White for her services before she departs. Meanwhile, Dalton faces the camera, exactly like the very first scene. However, it is revealed that he is not actually in a cell, but still in the bank behind a small hidden compartment that they had built. He's been in there ever since the heist living off supplies and waiting for the heat to die down. With the final phase of the plan complete, he carefully emerges from his hideout and begins to leave. Across the street, Kenneth, Valerie, Chaim and Darius are waiting in an SUV. They see Fraser and Mitchell going into the bank and call Dalton on his cell phone to warn him. But Dalton is unafraid. He even goes so far as to bump into Fraser as he and Mitchell enter the bank. He then walks out of the bank and into the waiting van, where he's greeted with a kiss from Valerie. Fraser and Mitchell inspect the safety deposit box 392. They're surprised and amused to find an unfinished package of juicy fruit gum, but they also find a jewellery box containing an exquisite diamond ring with a note that says, follow the ring. Detectives proceed to Case's office, where Fraser presents evidence indicating that Case hired White to control him and that Case himself committed severe crimes. Fraser shows Case the ring and warns him that he will pursue the truth. Later, Frazier meets with the mayor and White at a high-end diner. He gives White the pen with the incriminating recording he'd used as leverage against her. Fraser arrives home in the evening where he's greeted by Sylvia. As he stores away his gun and plaque for his promotion, thanks to White's power and influence, he realises there's a small object in his suit pocket. Reaching inside, he's stunned to find a beautifully cut diamond. A smile crosses his face when he recognises Dalton as the man who bumped into him at the bank. 
Dalton handed Fraser the diamond as a mark of respect and recognition of a true adversary.